We're going to be taking a look at another Gang of Four pattern this week, and that is the Visitor pattern. And the Visitor pattern is very often used alongside the Composite pattern, though in fact it works with any complex data structure. But we've already got a composite pattern, so that's what we'll use it with for this demo. And what we had from last week was a structure looking like this, where we had our composite with the to-do item base class, we had purchase items, work items, communication items, and then also the composite that allowed us to put together in our program this hierarchical tree. And when we ran all that up, we saw we could see the tree structure entirely displayed. We could see summaries of cost and duration. We could see we could find a particular item. So do have a look at last week's video if you're not familiar with that. But the thing about the composite pattern is it emphasizes the similarity between all of those different leaf nodes. In this case, the item nodes, work item, purchase item, and communication item. Because it operates really entirely through the base class, and our base class just has the four properties, name, description, hours, and cost. But in reality, you'll find that in these sorts of structures, often in the individual leaf nodes, you get additional features. So just by way of example, here we've added a purchase item as a supplier and a work item, as well as having the number of hours you actually worked, has the estimated number of hours that you thought you were going to work in advance. And as soon as we do that, we've got a problem because inside the composite, the composite only knows that it is dealing with to-do items. It doesn't know about the derived classes for perfectly good reasons because we don't want to have to change it when we add a new derived class. But in fact, what that means is that the composite itself is breaching one of our solid code principles, the first one, the single responsibility principle, because it's doing two things. It's doing the iteration through the children, but then it's also performing the operations such as to string and find and whatever we may have. So in order to fix that, we need to split that out to have a different class to do the job of actually calling the functions. And that's what the visitor pattern is all about. So I've put in here a folder called visitors. And the first thing I'll do is add on to that a new interface that I'm going to call I item visitor. And then what I'm going to do with that is give that a method that turns void is called visit and then overloads each one of the concrete to-do item types. So we're going to have one of them for the communication item. And also I'm going to use a nice little trick that we have in C Sharp 8 that we can have default implementations of interface methods. And I'm going to default all of these to do absolutely nothing. If you didn't have that feature, like we don't in other languages and didn't in earlier versions of C Sharp, if you didn't want to do anything, you'd have to override them in the derived class and make them do nothing there. So it's a bit easier because quite a few of these will default to doing nothing to do it in the base class. So we have these for each of the different items, the work item, the purchase item, and also we have one for the composite item. So that's the interface that we have to have. And then also the change we have to make is on our to-do item. And in here, we're gonna have a public abstract void accept method. The names of these methods, visit and accept, you could really call them whatever you like, but the Gang of Four book and most books call them by those names. And so it just makes it easier for anyone looking at your code to understand what's going on. But the accept takes one of these item visitors and we'll just call that visitor and does absolutely nothing with it because it's abstract and then what we have to do is in each one of the derived to do items we've obviously got to implement that and in the leaf nodes that's pretty simple because all we need to do is implement that as visitor dot visit and pass in ourself. So that code is exactly the same in the purchase item and the communication item. Looks a bit repetitive, that having exactly the same code in all those places, but we'll come back to that in a little while. Then in the composite, we've got to do a little bit more. So in the composite, still has to override that because it's derived from the work item. So here we say override of accept and then. The first thing we do is exactly the same. We say visitor.visit ourself. 
But then, just like with every other job in the composite, we have to loop through. So we say for each var item in items, then on that we say item dot accept. But obviously, to make it do anything, we've now got to introduce concrete visitors to do particular jobs. And so remember, these jobs are going to deal with the specific bits of data that we've put additionally on our concrete items. So let's consider estimated hours. And let's suppose we want a visitor which is going to calculate the total overrun. So it's going to go through all of the items. And if it's a work item, it's going to subtract the actual hours from the estimated hours to give us the overrun. So that's what we'll do. In the visitors, we will add a class. And we will call this overrun visitor. We will implement the interface. And then from the interface, we're going to take that work item. And that's the one that we're going to provide an implementation for. So that's the nice thing about having those defaulted in the interface. It means that for the other ones that overrun means nothing at all for, we can just ignore them completely. Whereas if we hadn't had that feature in the interface, we'd have had to just implement them directly to do nothing. So we put that in there. And then also, we're going to have a property of type double. And we'll call this total overrun. And we'll give that a public get, but we'll give it a private set. And then in here, I'll simply say total overrun plus equals, and then item dot hours minus item dot estimated hours. And really, that's it. That's the work done. So once the infrastructure is there, adding a new feature becomes just adding a new visitor. And that, of course, conforms with the open close principle. Adding new functionality means adding new classes, not modifying existing classes. So we've actually fulfilled the first two of our solid principles now. And if we just use that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare my overrun visitor. And then let's just call that ORV. And then I'll just take my root, which is items, which remember has the accept that takes a visitor. So we'll pass that in there. And then all that work of trickling it down through the composite structure, finding the work items, and adding up the calculation will be done for us. So all we now need to do is let's pop out a message saying total overrun is, and then ORV dot total overrun hours. And if we run that, then we can see we've got a total overrun of 28 hours. I'll leave you to check that that's correct. But I think you'll agree it was fantastically easy once we had the structure in there because that overrun visitor really just took no time at all to write. One slight improvement we can do here. Remember if we went back to our to-do item, we declared that the accept was abstract and then we overrode it in each of the drive classes in exactly the same way. So we had it just saying visitor.visit this. And that was true for all of the leaf nodes. You might think, why can't we just have that implementation in the base class? If it's all the same, why duplicate ourselves? The reason being, though, that decision that's made with the visit this is done using overloading. So remember, our visit has four different overloads. And so that needs to work on an overloading basis, which is a decision that is made at compile time, not at runtime. And so in here, we don't know at compile time what actual type of to-do item this is, and therefore we can't make the overloading decision. But if you remember quite a few videos back, I showed you how to do what is known as dynamic overloading, where we can defer that decision from compile time to runtime. And all we need to do is cast that to dynamic, which basically means the compiler does not know what it is at all. And that means it has to defer to runtime. And so now we can remove all of those just for simplification from each of the leaf nodes. And it will work in exactly the same way. 
And it really is as simple as that. Now we can just progress on and add as many more visitors as we like. So I'll just do a couple more. Remember on the purchase item we had a supplier, so let's do a visitor that can summarize what we bought from each supplier. So we'll go in here, add a new class, and we'll call this supplier breakdown visitor. As ever, we need to implement the interface. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a dictionary that maps the supplier name to the amount of money spent with that supplier. So we'll have a dictionary, string for the supplier name, decimal for the spend. So then we're going to do our visit. So let's once again just steal the stub of that from our interface and then pop that in there. So what we'll do here is, based on the name on that purchase item, we'll look up the supplier. And then that may or may not be the first time we've had this supplier. So what we can do here is, if we say breakdown.getValueOrDefault on item.supplier, what that will do is either give us zero for the spend if it's the first time we've had this supplier, or give us the current total, and then we can merely add on to that the cost of the next one. So there we've got the addition. And then we're going to actually need just to display this. So let's just put in an override of two string, and we'll use a string builder for this. And so we'll just loop through the dictionary. So we're getting key value pairs out of that, and we will pop onto the string builder, the name of the supplier, which remember is the key, and then the cost, which is the value. And then just return the two string on that. And then once again, having done all that, the easy part is we just need to add that in to our program. So we'll down here have pretty similar to that. So in this case, it's going to be a supplier breakdown visitor. We'll call that SBV. We send that into visit. And then in this case, we can just output the two string. And then run that up. And we can see we spent £39.50 at Fortnum Mason, £35 at Waterstones, 5600 at Dell. So again, very simple to add that. And in fact, if you want to take this to the extreme, you can replace every one of the existing methods that we had with just the use of a visitor. So if we take a look at our composite, then we only really need to have the accept and everything else like the find, the two string, and all of that we could just replace with the visitor. When it comes to something like the two string, it's a bit tricky because remember we've got this indent on the two string that we increment each step along so that we get this nice layout that we've got here. And so we've got to be a bit tricky with that. And so the way we do that is this. We add another method on to the visitor interface. And this returns an item visitor. And we call this get child. And by default, that does actually pretty much nothing at all. It just returns our cell. But then what we have to do with that is on the composite, rather than passing the visitor straight down to the child, we actually create the child visitor, and that's what we pass down. So we get a different visitor with each generation down. And with the overrun and the supplier breakdown visitor, that doesn't matter. And so those visitors just leave the default implementation in there. But when we come to this equivalent to the two string, that's when things get a bit more complicated. So we'll put in here another class, and this we're going to call our two string visitor. Again, it's going to implement i item visitor. And then what we're going to have to have in here, it's going to keep track of the indent. And also, it's going to have its own string build that is what's required to put this all together. We're going to have a constructor that creates a new string builder. And then we're going to have an overloaded constructor 
which is going to be private and which is going to take an indent and a string build. And for each of those, it's just going to set the fields to be what's passed in. And you'll notice that I've made that private because that's what we're going to use in our get child. So although by default, when we get child, it does nothing at all, really. But here, I'm going to have a get child. And what the get child is going to do is return a new two string visitor using that private constructor. So the indent is going to be indent plus one. And then the builder is just going to be the same builder. So that means that every time we go down a generation, it'll call get child. And we will have done that to increment that indent, which is what we wanted to do before. Then apart from that, not much more we've got to do. We've got to just put together a little helper function. So I'm going to call this private void show string, which is going to take a to do item. So this is going to be one of the leaf nodes, really. And then here, what we're going to do is actually steal the code basically that we already had, which remember was doing that to deal with our indentation. So we'll take that, put it in there, replace the builder name with underscore builder, and then we're going to multiply that by underscore indent, and then we're just going to have the two string called directly on there. So that's show string, and then we're going to have to now implement all of the methods in the visitor interface. So we'll take all of those and just pop them down there, make them public. And then all they're going to do is call that show string on the item itself. And that really should be it. So a slightly more complicated one there, partly because it's the first one of these that's going to have to generate a child. But now if we do that, let's just now get rid of the two string that we already have on the composite. And also change that on our base so it no longer takes the indent on there. So this is now actually back to overriding the original two string. And then in our program, we'll just do another one of these. So this is going to be our two string visitor, TSV. Just remember, actually, we need one more thing on the two string visitor, which is it needs its own two string so we can actually see what's in the build. So if on here we just do an override of two string, and then all that needs to do is return underscore builder. And so that's what will get called when we do the right line on TSV. And when we run that, we can now see right at the bottom. So after we displayed that, this is where we're using our two string visitor and getting exactly the same result. So that's it. There's the visitor structure. We just have this visitor interface that has a visit method for each one of the leaf nodes that you can default to do nothing at all if you want to. And then on the composite structure, we have the accept method on the to do base class that takes a visitor. Each one of the leaf nodes simply passes itself to the visit, and we can do that with dynamic overloading through the base class. And then the composite trickles it down and just calls the accept on each one of its children. And then we saw just that extra little trick we can do with that child visitor if you need to somehow modify the visitor as it's going down the hierarchy. So hope you enjoyed that. Next time, we're going to look at another related Gang of Four pattern, which is called the flyweight pattern, which is another variant of composite if you've got large amounts of data. So if you enjoyed this one, do click the like, do subscribe, and come back next time to find out about flyweight.